Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mohsen Safari and in this presentation I'm going to talk about automated verification of the parallel Bellman Ford algorithm which is a joint work with Witze Ortwein and Mariko Heisman. Uh, as we know many real world problems are modeled as graphs uh, and, and the increase in the size of the graphs uh, require us to design a highly efficient algorithm from one side and also correct algorithm from the other side. Uh, to obtain efficiency, we can use a modern uh, many core G uh, hardware like a GP GPU hardware where we can parallelize uh, algorithms. Uh, and we can also use deductive verification techniques to reason about uh, correctness of programs. Uh, in general, reasoning about GPU-based uh, programs using deductive technique is very challenging. And in this case study, uh, we would like to show how we can use deductive verification techniques to verify uh, a GPU-based algorithm, uh, the shortest path uh, Bellman Ford algorithms on GPUs. Uh, so we discuss uh, about the Bellman Ford shortest path algorithm. We give a pen and paper proof uh, for this algorithm, and then we try to mechanize this proof in a, a program verifier in a tool. And we uh, we show our evaluation and discussion, and then we uh, conclude our talk with a future work. Uh, the shortest path problem as an input we have graph G which consists of a set of vertices an arbitrary arc relation A and a weight function and we have a, a vertex S as a source and as an output we would like to find the shortest uh, uh, the weight of the shortest path from the source to all other vertices. Uh, this is the, the algorithm for the Bellman Ford. We have uh, an array cost uh, which we would like to store the, the shortest distance from source to all other vertices. Initially, we assign it to zero for the source and, and infinity for other vertices. There's, uh, there are two nested loops here. And uh, in the outer loop, we have uh, the number of vertices minus one uh, rounds. And in, in, in each round, we uh, for each arc, we do a computation, a comparison and a computation, which we call a, a relaxation. We compare the cost of a, uh, for, for an arc, we compare the source, uh, the, the starting point, the starting uh, vertex of, a, of an arc, the cost of that plus the weights, and uh, compare it with the, the, the cost of the destination of that arc. And uh, if it holds, then we update the cost of the destination to, an, to a smaller value. So as we can see, lines uh, 6 to 9 is where we can parallelize on GPUs. Uh, we can also see there's a, a, a barrier, a hidden barrier, at the end of each round. And finally, at the end of the algorithm, we return cost as the shortest uh, distances from source to all other vertices. Uh, to prove the correctness of this algorithm, we need to prove uh, data race freedom and functional correctness. Data race happens when uh, two or more threads uh, simultaneously access a shared location where at least one of them is right. And for fun functional correctness, we need to prove uh, soundness and completeness. Soundness in our context means after termination, the algorithm for any vertex that the cost of that vertex is less than infinity, it should hold that there exists such a uh, shortest uh, path from source to V that the cost of V exact is exactly the same as the weight of that path. And for completeness, we need to show that uh, for any vertex that there exists a path from source to V, then it should hold that the cost of that uh, vertex V should be uh, less than infinity. Uh, uh, this is how we formulate and we propose these uh, uh, post conditions that they must hold after the termination of the algorithm. The first two indicates our soundness and completeness, which refers to the uh, reachability in the graph. But the third uh, property indicates the, the shortest path property, which for uh, all vertices, uh, vertices that their cost is less than infinity, and for all costs uh, from the source to that vertex, the cost uh, of the vertex should be less than or equal to the weight of all that uh, path. Uh, from from uh, those post conditions, we propose the three invariants that the three invariants should hold here in line five in each round of the algorithm. Uh, this these invariants come exactly from the the post conditions, but we bound the length of the path to i, which is the loop variable. Before we we show the pen and paper proof, we would like to. Uh, introduce the notion of simple path here. We define an operation simple path that for each p it removes all, all cycles and returns a, a simple path. Uh, and the simple path means that all vertices in the path uh, are unique. And we prove these three properties of uh, the simple path that we need 
uh, in, in our proof. Uh, this is a, a, a proof that we uh, give for uh, establishing the post condition 3 from invariant 3. Uh, uh, we have a lemma here. We say that if at the end of the termination of the, the, the loop, which i equals to the number of uh, vertices minus 1, then in, in, invariant 3 implies post condition 3. Uh, to prove this, we can imagine we have an arbitrary vertex v such that the cost of that vertex is less than infinity and we have a path p uh, from source to that vertex and if we instantiate uh, invariant 3 with uh, vertex v and simple path here we have that the cost of vertex is less than the, the weight of simple path and we here prove that the weight of simple path is less than the weight of the path and by transitivity here we can say the cost of v is less than or equal to the weight of the path. So uh, for other uh, uh, post conditions we also have such a similar uh, proof. Here we can uh, we would like to prove that uh, if invariant one, two, and three hold uh, for a round i, and all relaxations happen for round i, then we would like to show that the invariant three holds for round i plus one. So we we show uh, the proof by uh, contradiction. We can we can imagine that we have a vertex v uh, such that the cart, uh, the cost of that vertex is less than infinity, and we have a path uh, from source to v that the p uh, length of that path is less than or equal to i plus 1 and the weight of p is less than uh, cost of v. Uh, so we uh, argue that the length of the p must be exactly i plus 1 because if it, uh, it were uh, less than i plus 1 then by uh, invariant 2 we would have that the old cost of v is less than infinity and by old cost of v we mean that the cost of uh, the vertex v uh, at the beginning of round i. So by uh, invariant 3, we would have that the old cost of V is less than or equal to the weight of path. And, and this is uh, impossible because we here uh, assume that the weight of path is less than the cost of V. And we know that the, during the iteration of the algorithm, the cost of a vertex decreases, but not increases. So this is not possible. Then the length of P is exactly uh, I plus 1. So we know that at least there is an arc in the, in the uh, path P. And we can uh, imagine the last arc is... Uh, a, which goes from V prime to V. So P consists of P prime, which is from S to V prime, and plus the arc A, which is from V prime to V. Uh, so uh, by invariant 2, we, if we replace V prime uh, and P prime, we have all of uh, cost V prime is less than infinity. And by invariant 3, we can have that all uh, cost of V prime less than or equal to the uh, weight of V prime. Uh, and we can see what uh, would happen for uh, the values of v prime and v during the iteration on round i. We, we, we can say that what we can observe. Uh, we know that these values uh, are what we have for v prime at the beginning of the uh, round i and what we have uh, uh, at the end of the round i. So the observation v prime and v is in this bound. Uh, from this expression, we can add a uh, weight to both sides, so we can have this uh, uh, this one and this expression, and from this expression, we can say that it's less than or equal to the uh, weight of P prime plus the weight of A, which is exactly to, uh, to weight of P, so we can say that the observation V prime plus uh, the weight of A is less than or equal to the weight of path. And uh, we can say what uh, would happen uh, for a thread that is assigned to arc A. That, that thread can update V to a smaller value by uh, whatever values we have for V prime here, the tentative value, plus the weight of A. And we know that the, uh, the cost of V is less than or, or, or small, smaller than this value because there might be other threads that update V to a smaller value. And here we also prove that this value uh, is smaller than uh, if smaller or equal to the weight of path. And by transitivity, we can say the cost of V is less than or equal to the weight of path which is a contradiction because here we uh, assume that the weight of path is less than uh, to the cost of V. So in this way we can prove the, uh, that invariance three holes in each iteration of the algorithm. And interestingly, for other invariants we can have such a proof by contradiction. To uh, mechanize this uh, proof, in, uh, uh, we use Vercor verifier. Vercor is a program verifier that we can used to verify data race freedom and functional correctness of these uh, input languages. We have to annotate these input languages uh, by pre and post condition in a, a pre and post condition horse style. 
And Vercor transforms these uh, annotated code into an input language of another tool, which is Viper. And Viper discharges the, the proof to an SMT solver Z3. Uh, the, the logic behind the tool is based on a permission-based separation logic. This is a simplified overview of how we encode the Bellman Ford in Vercore. As we can see, there's a function hostbf, which is in the host CPU part, and we have a loop in the, in the uh, CPU part, and in each round of the uh, algorithm, we launch a kernel, and in the kernel, each thread in parallel uh, uh, does the relaxation, which is by an atomic uh, operation. The atomic mean is a built-in uh, GPU programming function, which it compares its two uh, arguments and assigns the minimum one to the first argument. Uh, we define, uh, we have annotations, we annotate the, 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 uh, the function, the uh, CPU part and the loop and also the, the kernel. We have a predicate graph which we, uh, we show how we can represent a, a graph here. Um, we have two uh, arrays, source and destination, which each cell in these two corresponding cells in these two uh, arrays represent the starting and ending point of an arc. And we also specify here that we don't have self loops and multiple arcs. To prove a data race freedom, because uh, the, the logic behind the tool is based on permission-based separation logic, we need to specify permissions. So here you can see we, we have pointer, uh, which we indicate we have a read permission over uh, all cells in, in these arrays, source, destination, and weight. And we, we, we have pointer here to say that we have write permission over all cells in the, in the cost array. So this is the CPU part and the sequential part. Uh, uh, we can specify uh, uh, read and write permissions as also for as an invariant in the loop. But when we go into the kernel, uh, we have these uh, resources, these permissions as invariants. So when a thread enters the atomic mean, it uh, gets uh, these uh, resources, these uh, permissions, and when it returns the, the atomic mean, it uh, 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 returns all the permissions back. So these uh, invariants should hold at the beginning and, and, and at the end and during the uh, uh, execution of the atomic mean. So in this way, we can, we can prove data race freedom. Uh, for functional correctness, we, we encode our post conditions and also our invariants here, and we uh, prove some lemmas and we apply the lemmas at the end of each round to preserve the invariants, and we also prove some other lemmas to establish the post conditions and we apply them at the end of the algorithm when the loop terminates. terminates. Just to show you how we, we uh, encode our uh, contradiction lemmas here. We, we, we can say if uh, in, in round i, if uh, all three invariants uh, hold and all uh, threads contribute in round i, uh, then, and, and, and the next iteration of uh, the invariant does not hold, then it must imply false. So to encode this, we have a, a pure function as, uh, to prove this. We have all uh, invariants as a requirements, and, and uh, here we have uh, uh, the, the contradiction that we would like to prove here uh, we have uh, inf i, I plus 1 that does not hold. So we can, uh, and then we have as a post condition ensures false. So if we can prove this, that means from these requires, we can prove uh, that the, uh, as a post condition that is false. So that means that there's a contradiction in the uh, requirements. So the challenge here was to uh, guide the, the tool by uh, smaller steps that we needed as an assertions and, and we have some uh, uh, very, very smaller detail uh, steps here and we also needed to prove some other properties for example the transitivity property of, of a path so uh, in this way we could reach a contradiction and we could prove uh, this uh, uh, lemma in the tool most of our implementation is related to the specification, as we can see here. And it took six weeks and 12 minutes on this particular machine to verify this algorithm. Uh, we, we, we say that deductive program verifiers are very powerful, but we still need uh, expertise to verify such a non-trivial algorithm. And we need more and more case studies to make it easier for uh, uh, other people that they are not uh, professional in this area. Uh, as future work, we would like to see how we can reuse the proofs for the optimized version of this algorithm or for other parallel uh, graph algorithms on GPUs and how we can uh, generate uh, the part of the annotations automatically in the tool. 
Uh, all the specifications are available at, at this GitHub page. Thank you for your attention.